The Star Wars series started out as a movie that ended up being so big that I took each act and cut it into its own movie. But in order to create that movie, I had to create a backstory. And there's this very elaborate backstory that, that was created in order to get to the point of the first part of Star Wars, the first film. And uh, it's that backstory that hasn't been told yet. This story, the one that we've seen, pays off in a much larger way because it's, it's the, uh, uh, you get a sense it's the son vindicating the father. Uh, but we are doing this in a context that we don't know what, where the father came from or what made him be what he is or what needs to be vindicated. <laughs> so we're just seeing the sort of vindication without you know, the, the, the act being seen. And so it's very interesting. Uh, and, and we don't really understand, I think, clearly what the conflict is uh, at this point. The original concept really related to a father and a son and twins. I mean, a son and a daughter. And it was that relationship that was the core of the, uh, of the story. Um, and uh, it went through a lot of machinations before I even got to the first draft screenplay. Uh, and uh, you know, various characters changed shapes and sizes and, and uh, their... Uh, it isn't really until uh, it evolved into what is close to what Star Wars now is that then I began to go back and deal with the stories that evolved to get us to that point. And that, you know, uh, it's hard to say really where the, you know, how it evolves into a, into a, a piece because it, you know, you evolve it with various scenes and various moments. And, and when you're creating something like that, it, it the story itself takes over and the characters take over and they begin to tell the story apart from what you're doing, you know, and you kind of go with it and you have to go with it and it sends you down some very funny paths. Then you have to figure out how to break that apart and put the puzzle back together so it makes sense and is cohesive. Uh, but that's the adventure of writing is the fact that you're not sure where it's going to go. Um, and I think it took a while. I mean, I worked on Star Wars for a couple of years uh, before it evolved into what it is. When I first did Star Wars, I did it as a big piece. It was like a big script. Uh, it was way too big to make into a movie. So I took the first third of it, which was basically the first act, and I turned that into what was the original Star Wars. Uh, in the process of rewriting that script and thinking of it as only a movie and not the whole you know, trilogy, I decided that Ben Kenobi really didn't serve any useful function after the point he fights with Darth Vader. Uh, although in that draft, he continued on through the air battle at the end, and then he continued on through the whole script, the other two stories. And, uh, but when I took one and I looked at it, I said, you know, he just stands around for the last 25% of the film watching this air battle go on. And he really has no real function. And it would probably be much more satisfying, powerful, and interesting if he, uh, if Darth Vader were to kill him or he were to go into a different form. I made that decision based on just working on Star Wars. After Star Wars su was successful, and I said, well, gee, I could finish this entire script. You know, I could do the other two parts. I came to certain realizations about things that were in the script that were more difficult to now translate. Another one was uh, the Wookiee. In the end of the film, uh, it takes place on a Wookiee planet and there's a big battle with the Empire and the Wookiees and that sort of thing. Since I couldn't do that, I took one of the Wookiees and made him a co-pilot with Harrison. But in the original concept, the Wookiees were a primitive tribe and that was sort of key to what was going on at the end of the film. And then when I put Chewbacca in as a co-pilot, I've kind of established them as a, as a fairly sophisticated race. And so then when I went back, I couldn't use the Wookiees, so I turned them into Ewoks. So in the case of Ben Kenobi, I had uh, Luke being trained by Ben, only I had killed Ben off. So now I had to come up with another Jedi who was older and wiser and 
shorter than Ben, to train Luke. And that's how, um, that was the, the beginning premise of Yoda. Fairly early on that the idea of a space dogfight uh, came into play of wouldn't it be uh, interesting to take that kind of uh, uh, visual excitement and put it into outer space. So um, it was written, I think, very early on. It's in almost all the drafts of the screenplay. And um, in order to, I had no idea at that point how I was going to accomplish it. So it really wasn't until I sat down to to figure it out and, and got together with uh, some of the people who I brought in to start ILM that we began to, to focus on the fact that we would have to create a different technology in order to accomplish that. The, the approach that I had, which is to do it editorially rather than pictorially, um, I think I had from the very beginning because it seemed inconceivable that I could actually do what Kubrick had done in 2001. Uh, and you know, have it be done for any kind of amount of money that I would have access to. So I figured I would, you know, do it by sleight of hand, uh, using a lot of editorial techniques. And so I had to create something that was in motion. And we did um, some uh, what we call video matics, which we'd take little models and move them around on video and transfer that. And we did do some little animated pieces with very crude animation. And uh, then I took you know, footage from actual dogfights that, you know, we got out of gun cameras in World War I and World War II and, and uh, you know, various documentaries and that sort of thing. And, and out of that created a sequence that is more uh, visual in motion. I wanted a sort of a slick uh, used car dealer voice and um, tried everything I could to get another actor to come up to the performances that, uh, that Tony had, and I just couldn't find anybody to do it. And, um, and that was one of the reasons why I ended up with James Earl Jones as Darth Vader, because it really takes a top class actor to pull off that kind of, a, kind of an idea, to really be able to get into a part uh, where you're just putting your voice over a, an animated character or, you know, in, in, in this case, it's not even an animated character because it's, it's a character that's already been shot. So it's a reverse of what you get to do in animation. In animation, you get to sort of act it and create it. In this one, you're sort of working within the confines of what somebody else has already created. You know, the, the, the movement and the, the, the timing and all that sort of thing has been determined for you. And to be able to come up with a really excellent performance given that, if you're not the one that's actually doing it, it's extremely difficult. He started out in, uh, in American Graffiti, and uh, then I used him as a foil to do tests in Star Wars. I didn't actually interview him for Star Wars. He was brought in to do, you know, play against the other actors. You know, I had all these Lukes coming in, and so he would play against them, and I shot the screen test. And, you know, when you watch the screen tests of him playing the role and the other actors who were up for the role playing the role, there was just no question about who was the best. And, uh, you know, so I hired him for Star Wars. I was looking for a princess who was young. Uh, ideally, I wanted somebody about 16 years old, 17 years old. They, both Luke and Leo were supposed to be around the same age, and I wanted somebody, you know, teenager-like. So it was finding somebody who could hold her own against strong actors uh, and, you know, and still be the, the princess that she needed to be and be the authority figure that she needed to be and make it believable. And she was able to do that. And again, uh, you know, with these actors, all of them, you know, I tested, I'd s seen thousands of people, tested, you know, 20 or 30 people and then uh, gone down to a, a f on tape I think I'm telling to a very finite group of, you know, maybe uh, seven or eight actors for each role on film, and then studied it, and then we did that process again. So it was a very complicated procedure that took like nine months to go through. So it wasn't a, just a, that's the one kind of thing. It was a very arduous, um, thoughtful process.